Uh, let's go live straight up. What a great start to my week. I wish she was on here all the time. Uh, our talk international editor, Isabel Oakshot. Hello. Welcome to Monday's Drive. How are you? Hello. Very well, thank you. Did you have I don't a have a what? what? I don't have a hangover, unlike a lot of other people, because I decided to just wait and see how far we get before I start locking into these matches. Otherwise, it's just disappointment, isn't it? Uh, do you know what? I have to tell you about Euro Tour. I'd completely with you. I get into all of it. I love the songs and all that. But I'm also fed up to the back teeth of getting really excited and then being really, really miserable and depressed. So I sort of think the group stage will be fine. Ryan's looking at me like I've landed from Mars. Or maybe he's still drunk because he's sort of like that. Um, but I, I just I, I get more excited when it's the knockout stage. But I'm with you. Did you watch the match? No, as I said, I, I, I didn't. Um, I feel that kind of like normally I would, but I had something else important on. But I think from now on in, I'll definitely be watching. Excellent. Lovely to have you on. Uh, let's start. L lots of news today, Isabel, and really good to have you here. Uh, reform launching their plan for the country. Um, a contract's a manifesto. A manifesto's a contract, isn't it? What's the difference? Well, look, this is just a bit of a gimmick, isn't it? I mean, what they're trying to say here is that the word manifesto just carries such negative connotations. You know, it doesn't matter what party you vote for or you think you're going to vote for. Most voters are pretty sceptical as to whether what political parties offer during election campaigns bears any relation to what they actually deliver if they're ever lucky enough to be in power. And the Conservatives have demonstrated that so powerfully mm. uh, and shamefully, frankly, with their breached promises on immigration in particular in their last sets of manifestos. So I think Reform UK was just trying to say, actually, this is a bit different. We're not going to promise anything mm -hmm. that we can't deliver. At the same time, uh, Nigel Farage was very clearly admitting in the press conference that he's not going to be forming the next government. He's not going to. Well, I'll tell you what, let's let's play a little bit because you're right. I mean, the thing that most people have found refreshing in the two weeks he, since he threw his hat into the ring is he is honest. He is refreshing. I'd love to know your thoughts, people, about this. I mean, yes, he talked about tax cuts and defence spending. But he did this quite cleverly from Merthyr Tydfil in Wales. And this is another thing. This is this is where I think the Tory party miss the trick. And somebody like Farage is so good at. He's basically saying, you want a Labour government? Look at what happened in Wales. It was a complete and utter sham under Drakeford. Have a listen to Farage. Record levels of migration into Britain. We have now seen six consecutive quarters of GDP per head falling. We're getting poorer. The mass import of cheap, unskilled foreign labour may work for your big multinational company who want as cheap a labour as possible and couldn't give a damn about the social consequences, but it's not working. And we very much want to be a party that is on the side of working people. And that is why I think this is perhaps the most transformative thing um, in this document. Um, Isabel, really, let's cut to the chase, because we, I, I, you and I have talked about this for months, years. I do think immigration is an absolutely central feature, whatever the party is. I don't actually believe that either the Labour Party or the Tory party have an answer. And I get really fed up when people say to me, well, there isn't an answer. You know, tackling the gangs is one thing and sending them to Rwanda is another. And still we've got, you know, 170,000 damn people waiting to be processed by a country that can't get its arse in gear. Excuse my French. What would reform do? He says they won't form the government. Let's say they beat all expectations and hold the balance of power. What's Nigel Farage's way of dealing with an immigration problem? Do we know that specifically? Yeah, we do. I mean, on so-called illegal immigration, so that's people coming over primarily in the boats, he has said very clearly that he and his party would turn back the boats, by which they don't mean tipping people into the sea, let's be clear, there are very safe ways of doing this. I've done it in Australia, it was very effective. Mm. Now, those on the left and uh, others indeed, whatever their political allegiances, will say, oh, you can't do that because of international law. Uh, reformers said time and again, yes, you can. They're able to tell you which bit of which treaty means you can do it. And I think that were they to be in power, they would just test what happens with that law if they did it anyway. I mean, is the sky going to fall in uh, if they actually bro broke, I suppose, 
uh, some people's we, interpretation. We, 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 you did a great interview with the ex-Australian uh, Prime Minister and you were on JK Live some months ago and, and, and he talked very honestly, didn't he, Tony, about how um, at the time it was very unpopular, turn back the boats, my own country is really suffering, the kids can't get an education, there's hospital waiting list and then he did it and, and, and he was slaughtered by the opposition. Albanese, the Prime Minister now, right, He's, in, he's implemented or kept going the policy because, sorry if this upsets people, the people in Australia at that moment were really struggling. And yes, charity begins at home. And I do sometimes think, and this isn't pro Nigel Farage or anti anybody else, I do sometimes think that all politicians could look at, they talk about a cost of living crisis. Do they actually work out, Isabel, that people in this country are hacked off with the fact that other people are getting what they should get for what they paid for. That's what, that's how you should talk to the electorate because that I think would resonate with loads of people, wouldn't it? Yeah, and it does. And you know, people may not have a very detailed technical understanding of it and they don't know which clause of which international treaty means you can do something or you can't do something. They just see what they consider to be the manifest unfairness of yeah. people who have no links to this country. They've never worked here. They've never paid any tax here. They weren't born here. And they come over and they're instantly eligible for all sorts of good things. And this was another policy that was unveiled in that contract today uh, that Reform UK said they will not be paying any benefits to anyone who comes new to this country until they have been here for five years, paid into the system Absolutely. And, and not broken the law. Now, you wouldn't have thought that this was a particularly radical policy, you know, not breaking the law is just a pretty decent sounding condition. Pretty normal. Getting... Yeah, pretty normal. Other parties will consider that wild. You know, at the moment, you don't have to be here any number of years to qualify for benefits. Well, I'll tell you what I, I, tell you what I think. And again, I, you know, we do, as I've said it before, when we're doing an election, we are as balanced as we can be. Later on, we're speaking to the Greens. We're speaking to a Tory minister. We're talking uh, to the Labour Party in their round, as ever. But for me, you know, when people say to me, they said it to me privately, oh, but you don't know what it's like living in a war-torn country. No, I don't. But France is not war-torn. And I have this real issue, which is, you know, if you are escaping a war-torn country, surely the first country you got to that wasn't war-torn, you'd stay there. I don't care whether this is unpopular. We are an easy touch. And whether it's Farage or other politicians, people need to understand that the British people are seriously serious at the end of their tether. Probably exacerbated, yes, by what happened in, in Ukraine, and what's happened with COVID, there's a cost of living crisis. And I'm, I'm one million percent convinced we should be talking about our own people. That doesn't mean, as we prove for Ukraine, that we shouldn't do our bit when people are facing genuine hardship. Can I bring you on to the most delusional man in the United Kingdom? Um, Rishi Sunak says the Tories can still win. This, after Isabel, Grant Shapps, his defence secretary, said a Conservative's victory is unlikely. Open brackets. I'll be throwing my hat in the ring. Close brackets. Isabel? Good luck to him on that. Well, <laughs> last week I was on uh, the BBC of all channels um, with one Paul Scully, who was a Tory minister until fairly recently. Minister for London. Yeah. And exactly that. And he literally said, and these were his words, the game's up. Yeah. You know, the game is up for the Conservatives and they might as well admit it. And everyone else seems to have been admitting it on the Tory side essentially just pleading with voters not to give Labour too much of a big Ple majority. Pleading it's with voters desperate. not to give the Labour Party too much of a majority. That's what the Tory party's come to. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Do you think Grant Shapps would throw his hat in the ring, by the way, or not? Well, I think he'd have a, he might as well have a try. I don't think he's got any chance, really. But we have to wait and see how many Tories are actually left to fight over the leadership and which one of them actually wants it? I mean, it's no fun being the leader of a totally diminished, broken and fractured party. I've seen it before. Well, you know me, not you know me, I'm always, I always try to do the job correctly. You could, you could answer that with, and you know what politicians are like? They all want that moment. It's like, it's like women who go out with a bloke who's a, as an idiot. I'll change him. I'm convinced if you told me four and a half years ago that Keir Starmer would have got the Labour Party to where it is, we'd have laughed our heads off. Now, we can talk about Tory incompetence, but nobody knows. There might be five years of complete Labour incompetence. So somebody will want the job. But I think the only reason I suggest Shaps is he's had every other bleeding job in government, hasn't he? He's been everything. 
oh yeah, minister for this, minister for that. And he, mm. you know, he's a very good communicator, but I don't, I've never, I don't recall him having been particularly successful yeah even in the early stages of any previous leadership contest. So I like I like Mr. Shapps. I think he can be a pretty good minister, actually. I don't think he was right for the defence job no. because he doesn't have any background in that whatsoever. But he was quite a good minister for transport and various other roles he's held. Robert Jenrick. I... Robert Jenrick, any money. Listen, one final thing. Really appreciate you being here. I have a real thing about this. Um, the Labour Party will not raise income tax, VAT, no money back. Yeah, I'm doing that song again. Um, the three main things, locked. They've said that. Nobody, and West Streeting let this out of the bag yesterday, nobody is, is falling for the fact that if you are going to pay for stuff that you're promising, you have to get the money from somebody, right? And everybody, mm. quite rightly, Isabel, is saying, hold on a sec, West Streeting yesterday refused to rule out raising council taxes, capital gains tax, there's inheritance tax, there's fuel duty. These are going to be implemented. Of course they are, aren't they? The, the electorate need to understand that, right? Well, one of the things I think the Tory party has done quite well this campaign is that slogan, if you think Labour's going to win, better start saving. I mean, that is the reality. They Raising taxes, as Rishi Sunak has said, is in their DNA. That is what they're going to do. Which taxes is the question, but they're going to go up. And if you're a higher earner or you've got any assets, don't only start saving, but start thinking about how the hell you might have to plan to get out of the country. Because... Trust me, it's going to get really, really tough, I think. Completely agree. Can you do me a favour? My son Ollie's been in the garden trying to launch a rocket and he's watching the television. Can you say, well done, Ollie? Uh, fantastic. Could you do that for me? Brilliant, Ollie. I'm sure your rocket's better than some of the rockets that this country would be setting off. Very good, Isabel Oakshaw. I'm loving that. You nearly said, yes, right. Uh, Isabel Oakshaw, thank you very much indeed.